In this video, you're going to learn how to find the area of a regular polygon. We're going to talk about when you're given a radius or you're given the perimeter or a side length or the apothem. But first, let's talk about where do these formulas come from and how can we use them to find the area of a regular polygon. So the first thing is, say we're given a regular polygon like this. What's a regular polygon? Well, a regular polygon means that all the sides are the same length, they're congruent, and all the angles okay, are going to have the same angle measure. And so what we want to look at is we want to take this basic figure and we want to divide it up into triangles. And so you see how I'm drawing these radii? And the reason I'm calling these radii is because imagine if this polygon were inscribed. Okay, scribe means to draw or write. We're inscribing or drawing it on the inside of this circle where the vertices lie right on that circle. So you can see I drew these five radiuses here because this is a pentagon. And what we get here is what's called a central angle. And all these central angles are going to be congruent. So if you want to find the measure of that central angle, all you have to do is use the formula 360 divided by the number of sides or the number of central angles. And that'll give you the measure of that central angle. But what I want to show you is if we know that all these triangles are congruent, what we can do is we can find the area of one of these triangles, multiply by how many we have, and that will give us the total area of the regular polygon. Now we know the formula for area of a triangle, right? It's one half the base times the height. So the base would be like the, the bottom of the triangle, like this is your base right here, and the height would be how tall the triangle is, like that. But in a regular polygon, what we do is we call this perpendicular distance from the center of the regular polygon to the side the apothem. Okay, so we use the letter A for the apothem. So instead of calling this the height, I'm going to put A for apothem. And then the base, see the bottom of the triangle here, we call that S. Uh, that represents the length of the side. So I'm going to call this uh, S. And then we've got one half. So instead of one half base times height, we really have one half S times A. And remember how we said if we find the area of this one triangle and multiply by the number that we have, that'll give us the area of the whole polygon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by n, meaning n is the number of triangles, or you can think of n as the number of side lengths, okay, because however many sides, that's the same as the number of triangles. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this formula here, because remember, multiplication is commutative. You can change the order, and you'll still get the same answer when you're multiplying. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 half a n s. So you can see that's one of the formulas that students typically use when they're finding the area of a regular polygon. But what about the second one here, area equals one half apothem times perimeter? Well, we know that the side length multiplied by the number of sides is the perimeter, right? So here if I just group n and s together, n times s is the same as p, and so that's where we're getting the one half apothem times perimeter. Now when we're doing some of these problems, we may have to use special right triangles like 30, 60, 90 or 45, 45, 90 triangle as well as some trigonometry like the sine, cosine, and tangent. So let me erase this. Let's jump into the four examples. Pause the video, see if you can do these on your own, and we'll work through them together. Number one, we're given a regular hexagon. Hexagon means that there's six sides. All the sides are congruent. All the angles are congruent. So a regular hexagon, how do we find the area? Well, let's go to our formulas here, 1 half a and s, or 1 half a times p, whichever one you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and use the 1 half a and s. So we know the side length, okay, that's going to be 10, so let's go ahead and put that in place of s, okay, and we know the number of sides, that's going to be six sides, so that's going to be six, and now we have to find the apothem. So apothem, remember, we drop a perpendicular to the side, and what happens is it's going to bisect the side, okay, so it's going to cut it in half, so these are the same, they're both going to be five, and I like to draw this as a triangle like this. Now, when you think about these regular polygons, remember how we talked about how you can uh, break it up into congruent triangles? And you can see that there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. So if I take 360 divided by six, that gives us our central angle of 60 degrees, which is right here. But when I drop that altitude, which is the apothem, it's gonna bisect this angle. So that means that this is a 30 degree angle. Let's go ahead and draw this triangle a little bit larger so we can see it. So this is a 30 degree angle, and this side length is five because we cut the side in half. And we're gonna go now to our 30, 60, 90 special right triangles. So if this is the short leg, the one across from the 30 degree angle, which is five, how do we get from the short leg to the longer leg? Well, we have to multiply by the square root of three. So this is gonna be five square root of three. 
And that's our apothem right there. So let's go ahead and put that into our formula. And now if we multiply all this together, we get 6 times 10 is 60, times a half is 30, times 5 is 150, square root of 3. So that's an exact answer, 150 square root of 3 inches squared because it's area, and you got okay, it. Number two, see if you can do this one. We have a square, okay, which is a regular quadrilateral, inscribed inside of a circle with radius 8 centimeters. So how do we find the area of this square? Well, let's go ahead and uh, go and write down our formula again. Area equals 1 half A times N times S. Now, I like to write the formula down first, then I can kind of figure out what I need, what's missing, you know, et cetera, and I can just kind of keep it organized. So you might want to do that. But the first thing I like to do is I like to divide this up into congruent triangles like so. And you can find the central angle again, remember, by taking 360 divided by one, two, three, four angles. So that means that each one of these central angles here is a right angle, 90 degrees. Now, if I drop an altitude, okay, which is going to be the apothem of the triangle, it's going to bisect this angle here. So that means that each of these is going to be 45 degrees, which means that this triangle right here is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. It's a special right triangle. So how do we go from the hypotenuse to the leg? Okay, of this triangle. Well, you can see the hypotenuse is x root 2. We have to divide by the square root of 2 to get to the side length. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take 8 divided by the square root of 2. We don't want the square root in the denominator. We're going to have to rationalize by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 2. So this gives us 8 square root of 2. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. And then 8 divided by 2, you can reduce. This comes out to 4 root 2. So this is 4 root 2. The apothem is also 4 root 2, and if this is 4 root 2, this is 4 root 2 because the side is bisected by the apothem. Okay, so now we have some more information to put into our formula. So the apothem we said was 4 root 2. The number of uh, sides is 1, 2, 3, 4. It's a square, so that's 4. And then the <clears throat> length of the side is actually going to be 4 root 2 plus 4 root 2, which is 8 square root of 2. Now all we have to do is multiply that together. So we have... Uh, let's see, 1 half, well, let's do it like this. 4 times 4 is 16, times a half is 8, 8 times 8 is 64, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, 64 times 2 is 128, and that's going to be, see this is centimeters, so it's going to be centimeters squared. Now, remember, with multiplication, you can do it in any order. I just did it in a way that I thought would be a little bit easier to do uh, without a calculator. Okay, number three, in the comments below, let me know how many of these you were able to get right. So out of the four, let me know. But this one, we're given a regular pentagon, and they're giving us the apothem here. So a little bit different. So, you know, sometimes they give you the radius, sometimes they give you the side length, sometimes they give you the perimeter, sometimes they give you the apothem. But in all these problems, we can always use this formula, area equals one-half A times N times S, or area equals one-half A times uh, P. But the first thing I like to do is I like to divide it up into congruent triangles. So see how I'm drawing these radii like this? So you can see there's five sides, so there's going to be five of these central angles, and if we take 360 degrees divided by five, that's going to give us 72 degrees for this central angle. But remember, when you drop that apothem, okay, that's going to bisect this central angle, meaning it's going to turn out to be half, which is 36 degrees. So let me just draw this triangle over here. It's a little bit bigger, we can see it. The apothem we said was 12. And let's see, we've got number of sides, which is 5. We just have to find the length of the side. So what we're going to do is we're going to find this side right here. Okay, I'm just going to call that x, but we're going to have to double it because, you know, we bisected it when we dropped the apothem. So what trig function? Now here we're uh, doing sine, cosine, and tangent. We're using our trigonometry to find this missing side. Which one should we use? Well, remember, you always want to position yourself over here at the angle, and you've got the opposite side and you have the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent, that's going to be tangent. So this is going to be the tangent of 36 degrees equals the opposite side x over the adjacent side 12. It's always the second over third in this SOHCAHTOA acronym. If we multiply both sides by 12, we can get x by itself. So let's go ahead and do that on the calculator. That's um, 12 tan 36. Make sure you're in degree mode. And so this is coming out to, I'm just going to round a little bit here, but it's 8.719. Now, I'm going to have to double that because we 
you know, we already cut it in half. So we need to double it to find the side length. So I'm going to say 2x is equal to about 17.437. So that's our side length s, 17.437. And let's multiply this together. Now a little hint, because you don't want to round and then round again, because you're going to get what they call a rounding error. So I tend to take that previous answer and carry it forward. So I'm going to take this whole long decimal, I'm going to multiply it by 5, I'm going to multiply it by 12, and I'm going to multiply it by a half. And that comes out to a little bit more accurate, uh, 523.11. And we're just going to say on this one, units squared, because I didn't specify the units. Okay, if you're new to the channel and we haven't met yet, my name is Mario of Mario's Math Tutoring, and I tutor students in person every single day. So what I try to do is take you know, what I learn from helping students and try to distill it down and to make it easier. And I put these lessons in these videos here, um, trying to show you the different techniques that make it easier to solve these problems. So I hope that's helping. You know, my goal for the channel is to make learning math less stressful so you can raise your grade, pass your class, and go on to pursue your dreams. So let me know if these videos are helping you. Uh, but let's do the last example here. Number four, it says, find the area of a regular decagon with a perimeter of 100 millimeters. Now, a lot of students say, Mario, I don't know how to draw a decagon. You know, I don't even know how to draw maybe a hexagon. You don't actually have to know how to draw any of these figures. What you can do is you can do something like this. See, you can kind of almost draw it like a circle, okay? Uh, regular polygon kind of looks like a circle as the number of sides increase. And then remember how we've been dividing up these uh, polygons into triangles, kind of like this? You can keep going around and make 10 of those, or we really only need one of them, okay? So we're just going to focus on one of these uh, triangles right here. And if I want to find that angle, I just have to use our formula, 360 divided by the number of these triangles, which is 10, and that's going to give us a central angle of 36 degrees. Now, if you've been following along, you notice we always bisect that central angle. We cut it in half. We drop that apothem, right, the altitude of the triangle. And so now that means that this angle right here is actually going to be 18 degrees. So let's go ahead and draw that triangle a little bit larger over here. It's got an angle of 18 degrees. And... We know that the perimeter is 100 millimeters all the way around. Well, if there's 10 sides, that means the side length of each of these uh, is going to be 10. But when we drop that altitude, it's going to bisect it or cut it in half. That means that each of these are going to be 5. And so now what we can do is we can find the apothem. So again, what I like to do is I like to start off by you know, writing the formula, 1 half apothem times perimeter, I'm going to use this uh, second one in this case because they gave us the perimeter is 100 millimeters. So let's go ahead and put that in. Uh, the apothem we don't know yet, and then times a half. So what trig function ties together this angle, this side, and this side? Well, it's tangent again because we have opposite and adjacent. So let's write that down. Tangent of 18 degrees equals uh, opposite over adjacent. And there's a couple different ways to do this because the variable is in the denominator. You can think of this as being uh, over 1, because anything divided by 1 is itself. You could cross multiply and then solve it that way to get rid of the fractions. But there's a little technique, it's a property of proportions, where you can interchange these on the diagonal. So meaning I'm going to put the a here, a over 1 of course is a, and then this would be 5 over tangent of 18. So let's go to the calculator on that and see what that comes out to. So 5 divided by the tangent of 18, it's about 15.388. So let's write that down. So 15.388. And now we have everything that we need to find the area. Again, I'm just going to take this long decimal that's on my calculator and carry it forward by using either the previous answer key or um, you know, carrying it out more decimal places. So times 100 times a half, and I'm getting about 769.42. Uh, not units, but in this case it's millimeters squared. So that's the area, and you got it. If you want to see more examples working with finding the area of a regular polygon, follow me over to that video right there, and we'll dive into some more examples. I'll see you in that video.